as Rachel wept. And we read in Genesis, Jeremiah, and Matthew, so we weep for the children who are no more. And we pray with the psalmist, the Lord be near the brokenhearted and save the crushed in spirit. It is good to be in worship in the highs and the lows of life. Thank God for the freedom to worship, to gather this day and for all those who down through the ages have risked their lives to give us this gift. Good morning. Seventh Sunday of Easter. Every Sunday is a mini Easter, but there's this big fat season we're just coming to the end of today. Next week, Pentecost. Invite you to wear red if you'd like to celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit among us and the birth of the church. Um, anything? Anyone? Let us worship God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Kyrie eleison. God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is found in the book of Acts, 16th chapter. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. 
But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when the owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews. And they are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After that, after they'd given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our second reading is found at the very end of the good book, the last chapter of Revelation. Listen for God's word for you this day. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The Spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty, come, let everyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the saints. Amen. Gospel according to John, 17th verse, chapter. Jesus prayed. 
I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may be completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I reckon it's safe to say that we're not always one, as Christ prayed us to be. Not here in this congregation or in the church at large. Not here in this community, state, nation, world. <laughs> Many of us are not even one with ourselves much of the time but we long to be. We want to see Jesus get on the same page. Be one. Probably wouldn't be here if we didn't. We sing, well, we used to sing. We want to sing. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. That would be an answer to prayer. Jesus' prayer here in John. In our time, by my observation, the world does not by and large, know Christians by our love. We're known to have a number of different flavors, denominations. That gets in the way for some people, and I don't think that's a primary distraction for the world. A plethora of denominations who keep Christ at the center and, and His prayer for unity and focus and Grace and love and relationship is like a well-stocked buffet. But there are differences that divide us, clear out a scripture altogether, focusing on divisive ideologies, sometimes a misguided sense of superiority, fear-mongering. People notice that stuff. And I'm afraid that is how some know we are Christians. Nationalism, for instance, is not supported in Scripture or prayed for by Jesus. Yet many who claim Christ hold that up as holier than the gospel. If we're thinking we're superior in any way to any one of God's children, anywhere on earth, we are deluded. The gospel time and again calls us to care for the other rather than fear or hate or kill the other, whoever the other may be in a given circumstance. Paul and Silas, as Jews in Gentile or Roman territory, were other when they were brought before the magistrates, 
the locals didn't charge him with taking away their revenue stream. They just labeled Paul and Silas as other. Their religion, their customs are not like ours. They're a threat to us. Don't you all agree? And the magistrates and the people agreed. They're different. They must be dangerous. Lock them up. People are meant to be loved, and things are meant to be used, not vice versa. You stand up to a system that seems at times designed to be vice versa, you're bound to tick somebody off. So these owners, irritated with Paul and Silas for messing up their system, abusive as it was, So they arranged to get these others disposed of, beaten with rods, locked in stocks, and thrown in the innermost cell. It was a pretty bleak situation. I imagine many in that position could have been rather despondent. But we read that Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and that their fellow prisoners were listening to them. Why were Paul and Silas singing in prison? They had every reason to be afraid of the other in their situation, the jailer, if no one else. But on this last Sunday of Easter, we reflect, as we reflect on these two, we recall Christ getting passed around through the established system of oppression just before Easter, and the crowd turning on him, he didn't get fearful in the face of Pilate or Herod or anyone else, and neither do Paul and Silas. Instead, they pray and sing. They worship God. At a time when you wonder what on earth can you do with the earth being so upside down, worship God. And so here we are. In light of the atrocities, like those that occurred again this past week, the phrase thoughts and prayers has become hollow. We say it over and over again, but and, and maybe mean it, really, I mean, to our core. But faith without works is dead. Revelation, we hear we're going to be rewarded in works. And don't want to get into the whole works righteousness thing, because that's not gospel either. But what is our work? Answering Jesus' prayer to become one is one answer not of one mind on all issues. I mean, thank God for our diversities of opinions and all other facets. What a gloriously eclectic and colorful creation God has made. But one in the Spirit, one with God in Christ. Well, how the heck do we do that? <laughs> One answer that I get from our text this morning is worship. What is worship? What is worship? Seems like it'd be a simple answer for people that are sitting here in worship, but Archbishop or William Temple, who was Archbishop of Canterbury, writes, to worship is to Quicken the conscience by the holiness of God. To feed the mind with the truth of God. To purge the imagination by the beauty of God. To open the heart to the love of God. To devote the will to the purpose of God. That sounded like becoming one. Richard Foster writes, maybe more simply, to worship is to know, to feel, 
to experience the resurrected Christ in the midst of the gathered community. That's what Paul and Silas were doing. Hopefully, that's what we're doing here today. Worship has a lot of different forms, and we come to it from a lot of different perspectives, places, each carrying our own baggage, experience, and expectations. And what got you here this morning? Habit? Did you come expecting the same old thing every week? Did you come expecting one preacher and you got another? <laughs> Did any of us come expecting to be transformed? Oh. Paul and Silas had been transformed by the love of God. Prior to the situation we find them in today, they had touched on this one with Jesus stuff that Jesus prays we will all experience, and it changed them. Changed them so that when times got tough, their response was to worship God. I don't read that they did it in order to change people. I think they did it because they could not not do it. And people listened, and they were changed. And these other prisoners listened and, and must have also been just transformed to some degree because when they had the opportunity, none of them bolted. For the sake of the other, their oppressor, in this case, they stayed. And the jailer, upon witnessing this, their love, their oneness with the Christ who was praying here in John, the jailer was transformed. He and his whole family. What must I do to be saved? He asked. What can I do in the face of such horrific atrocities in our day, I ask. Worship God. As we encounter the resurrected Christ, we are transformed. How can we not be? I've heard it said, find peace and thousands around you will be saved. If we change, find peace, find union with God in Christ, people around us change. They come to know us by our love rather than our vitriol. God's love is so great. Resurrection happens. That's transformative. Hard to wrap your mind around, but it's, it's transformative. It changes things. Death doesn't get the final answer. That's why Easter season is so long. Why every Sunday is a mini Easter. That can't help but change it, change us. How we live and move and have our being in every aspect of our life. That's our ministry. That's part of our work. Becoming one with Christ through right worship and study and prayer and song in work, in school, in prison, in life. It's our response to a loving God. It's how we change the world, one encounter at a time, one encounter with the other with whom we are one, one encounter with creation with which we are one, one breath at a time, inspired by the breath of life, the one in whom we are one. Breathe, O oh breathe, your unifying spirit into our darkness. Guide our work and lift our spirits with the hope that only you can offer. Amen.
Sorry, everybody, yes. Right. Somebody printed the bulletin and then changed his mind and decided to do this hymn instead of the one in the bulletin. So, if you would, please, take out that extra song that you got handed this morning. There you go. I don't, if you were hearing, I didn't hear you. So, you know, but then we just stopped so you can do it louder. But since I didn't say anything about it, it's really on me. So I'm sorry, and uh, let's please start that again. Thank you all. We confess our faith with one voice using the words of the Nicene Creed, um, one, page 104. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church 
people in need, and all creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. God, in your mercy. Lord, no greater love has one than to lay down their life for another. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples, turning our swords into plowshares. God, in your mercy. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry. Those on our prayer list this day, those you've placed in our hearts and minds, and those known only to you. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence, God, in your mercy. Loving God, who knows what it is to weep, we cry out with rage and heartbreak. Thank you for journeying with Uvalde in the valley of death. Ignite in us your spirit of determination and compassion. Help us to recognize the ways we are unified as your body and to support one another as we respond to the issue of gun violence. Go with us and empower us to be agents of your love. God, in your mercy. There are people even now, O oh Lord, hatching ideas for how to wreak havoc and destroy your beloved creation. Through, through their words on social media, through weapons in our schools, change their hearts, O oh God. And change our hearts, O oh God, that we might be some small part of answering your prayer to be one, become known by our love, sharing your love with all we meet. God of mercy. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Find a way to share God's peace with someone near you. Where our treasure is, there will our heart be also.
O oh God of justice and love, we give you thanks that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. This is the mission we share in Christ's name, to praise God, nurture faith, and serve all. 825. Fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. <laughs> 